uh, hello everyone um, and hello to uh, the Middletown uh, Arts Academy as well because this is for them as well as my TV film classes uh, so uh, the other day I, my first interview we did was with Ming so now we have uh, Jack Mulcahy here um, how you doing Jack how are you guys I'm hanging in there man hope everybody's doing well staying safe staying home so uh, recently uh, the other we're doing a lot of directors uh, and studying a lot of directors and it was St. Patrick's Day, so of course I did a whole thing for the students on uh, Ed Burns, and of course, uh -huh. and you came up. With, um, so it's great to have you here to talk. No, it's great to be here. Um, you know, they, they actually read an article and had a little uh, uh, Q and A with uh, um, uh, one of the videos that he did, and he talked about the story that the great mm -hmm. story that you talked about, Brothers McMullen, and how it got into uh, um, uh, Sundance. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, the, the students they know about that now, so that was pretty great. So, uh, um, I don't know if you want to talk about that and how that got started. Well, I mean, it, I, I saw Brothers McMullen start from a drunken conversation in a bar over darts mm -hmm. to um, fast forward about five or six months later. I actually forgot about Ed, and he called me up and he said, "Hey, man, I'm really excited. I got like 15 grand. I got some startup money. I got the uh, I got the script finished." And I said, well, that's great. How much money you got? He goes, I got 15 grand. <laughs> I was like, oh, totally? He goes, yeah, that's all we need. <laughs> so, you know, we go ahead and, and we shoot it. And, you know, one thing after the other happened, you know, we had um, 26 storms that winter. So we couldn't match exteriors for the longest time. We were only shooting on weekends. Ed came down with an attack of appendicitis. So he was out for two weeks. And then our uh, DP slipped a disc in his back. And he was out for four weeks. Oh, so here we are in the middle of winter. We, we've got maybe not even a third of the film in the can. And we're just like dying. I'm, I'm holding on to 45, 50 extra pounds and I'm dying a shed, right? And uh, so, and Eddie's like, well, I hope you're still fat <laughs> when we get back to shooting. And we actually finished um, the final uh, day of shooting a day before my 40th birthday. Oh, wow. And we had a huge party in my apartment and that's in April, you know, April, it's coming up. Well, you know, because, you know, I, I won a best actor award at your festival yeah. on my birthday, yeah. which was kind of cool. Well, um, uh, this year we're, we pushed it to September. I know, I know. And I'll be there and I'll have films there. Um, so anyway, so from that moment on, from April until December, I didn't hear a word from Ed, not one word until uh, I came home and listened to the voice messages. Remember when you had voice messages and <laughs> you had actually tapes in a message machine? And he said, uh, pack your bags, going to Sundance, <laughs> click. And I was like, what the hell just happened? And Sundance was the only festival that had actually accepted us. Oh, wow. And Ed has a full wall of rejection slips and notices that people sent him and then he Tax the, the Sundance one right in the middle of it, wow. which is kind of cool, yeah. And then the rest is history. I mean, after the first screening, we were like, we were the darlings of the indie film circuit. Wow, and that that started it all. And uh, um, it started it all. It kind of blew up from there. That's that's basically what I've been doing most of my life as well. And you've been acting in most of those. Oh well. God, yeah. A lot of independent oh. films, right? You got a whole a lot of independent films. And, um, you know, when you cut your teeth and, and that's, you know, that's the medium that I feel most comfortable in, um, mostly for the fact that you get either the lead or you get really interesting supporting leads and you get to work with young filmmakers. You get to, I mean, when you have too much money and there is such a thing as too much money on a budget, you know, you let attention to detail sometimes slips. And with, you know, you have to make every dollar count on an independent feature, every single dollar count. And I don't know if Brothers McMullen would have been a better film if it was a $15 million film. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, it might've been a little more polished and maybe better, maybe we could have actually used film, <laughs> you know, instead of used film. Uh, but aside from that, the story was there, the people were there, um, the passion was there and because we had so much downtime, Connie and I, and Connie Britton and I, and Mike McGlone and I, we would get together and we would rehearse. So when it came time to be on set, we were like polished and we were ready to go. No more than one or two takes, wow. any one of those scenes. Wow. Yeah. That's almost like 
it's all, I, I mean, the way it was done then, it was almost like theater, right? It was kind of like a play. Yeah. yeah. Like I mean, it would have to be. And, and we would uh, shoot long chunks. I mean, I, I felt so bad for Ed's parents because, you know, they had to light out, you know, every weekend and just give us their house in, uh, in Valley Stream. So, uh, yeah, Valley Stream, that's where I'm originally from. Is that right? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Originally from Valley Stream. And I was a little baby. So my, yeah. Yeah, so my, my, my parents were there, my cousins, all that. So. Wow. I didn't know that. You know, I thought you were a Jersey boy through yeah. and through. For a long time, I've been a Jersey boy. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Work, you know, so. Mm -hmm. uh, well, anyway, if we backtrack a little bit, what got you into acting? Did you start in uh, theater and college or? Uh, or well, you know, um, with this whole pandemic, people have been reaching out, right? And, you know, people, have, I've been actually having phone conversations with people and they're, they're always lasting at least an hour or so. And today I was speaking to my cousin who was, uh, who went to Cathedral High School. She was about 14 years older than me. And she just called to see, she's in Texas now. Oh. And she called to see how, how I was. She, she knows my career has like been, you know, she's followed my career the whole time. But she also remembers when I was six years old, I went to our local movie theater and sat through West Side Story three times. And it's a three hour film. Yeah. And I didn't get home that night, summer night till 9.30 at night. And my mother was terrified. She had no idea where I was. And I walked in the house and I said, Mom, before you spank me, let me show you this. Tonight, tonight won't be just any night. And so she goes, go to your room. <laughs> my sisters were really upset that I didn't get spanked right in front of them. And then my mom comes in, she brings in some food, and I'm still bouncing off of the furniture and just doing all these dances. And she goes, is this something you think you might want to do? And I go, oh, Mom, I'm doing this when I was six. Wow. Yeah. So I knew then. And uh, um, well, you started before Brothers McMullen, you're already doing it though, right? You're already. I was already doing it, yeah. I had um, my first big feature was Porky's, yep. which was another tiny little independent feature. It was one of those, hey, who knew, right? We made that for a yep. million and a half dollars. Yeah, but I, I, I grew up with that. I know, <laughs> I know, in that era. And, and it's funny because um, that film itself was. Um, another who knew, right? It was, it was yeah. like a million and a half uh, dollar, a uh, million and a half a uh, budget. And um, we had no idea what was going to happen with it until we were on the cover of Rolling Stone. Wow. And that was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? And I remember the guy who played Meat, right? Called me from Colorado Springs. And he goes, hey, little buddy, check this out. And he holds the phone up and I hear this audience laughing. I'm going, what the hell is that? He goes, dude, man, we're heroes. We're going to shoot the sequel in June. See you then. Click. And I was like, we haven't even released this one yet. <laughs> and he goes, oh, my God, this is crazy. Well, the thing wound up making $200 million wow. in 1982. Wow. Yeah. That's so we did, you know, we did uh, went back down to Miami. And this time, you know, it wasn't like, you know, the Tony Montana's uh, South Beach. You know, it was like. <laughs> It was like number one, first class all the way with a budget of, uh, I think, $9 million that budget was. And that wound up making $90 million bucks. Not not as good, but still. Um, and so that gave me the jump start to film. Yeah. Because before that, I was a singer and a songwriter. And I, you know, was, I was with Atlantic Records for a long time and, uh, and what have you. So, yeah. So, you know, here we are, 125 film, television and stage credits later, you know. Uh, well, that's great because, like, uh, a lot of my students, and uh, we have the uh, Arts Academy, which is made up of freshmen and sophomore, and they're they're singers and songwriters and musicians and uh, filmmakers and actors. So it make it's all like a whole huge and uh, art artists and things like that. So it, it makes helps this whole thing. So um, mm -hmm. and a lot of them, you know, they take all the different classes, and uh, they, there's a lot of talent there. So there is a lot of talent. And working with young filmmakers, particularly um, Columbia University and NYU, and I've actually shot student films for USC out in California. And what I love about their programs is that, you know, one week you're the PA, the next week you're the writer, the next week you're the director. So you get to see it from the bottom up to see how all the departments work and they work in sync because, you know, actors are basically just a component of everything else, right? It's a director's medium, basically. 
yeah. uh, as opposed to theater where that's really an actor's medium because once you take the stage you can't be directed you know so you're out there on a high wire which is why you know Shakespeare said the play is the thing right I that's just, basically what it really boils down to I was never good at myself doing Shakespeare and reading it and learning it in high school I did struggle but I, I understood it but I struggled and and I recently and I, I've seen uh, plays in the past, but I recently over here uh, in Red Bank, I saw Twelfth Night. Oh, it's a brilliant yeah. play. An amazing version, though. They added all this music that from this band. This band was part of it, and they were acting in it and playing all this music. It was it was the most amazing rendition I ever saw. Yeah, uh, it's pretty incredible. And it's a uh, great play. I couldn't believe, and it was only out for like a month, but it was sold out every night. But it was it by far the best version of it that I've ever seen. It is. And, and <clears throat> I always say this to uh, my students who I coach. Um, you can walk into a room full of actors and they can all be working and, you know, hey, what, what have you been up to? Oh, I just booked a national network spot. Hey, that's great. I just finished a feature. I'm doing, working on a short here. And they walk up to me and say, what are you doing, Jack? And I go, I'm going to play. Everybody stops and goes, really? Yeah. Because we all know how incredibly terrifying it is, first of all how much work it is, and yet ultimately how incredibly rewarding it is. It was the first time I, I was, when I was in high school, I, was, I wasn't was sure. I never really did a play or a movie or anything when I was in high school. And then my senior year, I did a play for the first time, got on stage for the first time. And all my fears or everything getting up and kind of, it just all went away and I loved every minute of it. Yeah, I mean, right. you are really forced to be in the moment, yeah. right? All five senses have to be working in concert. You have to like even smell your partner's desperation if, if that's the case. And at that moment, but, I was like, oh, I wish I did this years before. Yeah, but, yeah, I know. It's it's um and and you really have to listen when you're on 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 stage, even if you're not part of the scene. Yeah. You really have to realize. And I, I tell uh, my actors again, it's like you really start to hook into it when you realize who you are and where you are in the play, mm -hmm. right? And I'm not just talking about what page you're on, but what part of the play that you are, how important you are to it, and what, uh, what component of the play do you have that uh, has, bearance, uh, has forbearance on the, on the play itself. That's something I miss. I, I miss. I I, li I love going to the city and seeing black box theaters. Yeah. Like that yeah. Or plays. I haven't done it in a while, and now we're not going to do it for a while. So I know. I'd like to I know. Get to that. I know. And, and then, although although PBS is streaming uh, live Broadway, I mean Broadway shows. Oh really? That have been taped. Yeah, they're for free <laughs> until uh, the uh, Phantom. I think the end of June, something oh. like that. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to go to the Phantom um, this month. Or uh, yeah, the end of the uh, end of April, we were supposed to go see Phantom of the Opera. I've never seen it, wanted to. So I had tickets uh, last for last um, Tuesday night for the opening night of uh, American Buffalo. Oh wow! wow. I know. So it, I know. It was uh, uh, you know once this all passes, we can get back to the Broadway and seeing those shows. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think after this is all over, I think that you're going to see an explosion of creativity because artists, you know, we go into our little cocoons and we like, you know, we ruminate and we just like, you know, we got to get this stuff out. I said, and we will, and, and I can't wait to hear and see what's coming out of this. And you know, we're we're doing assignments and things online, but I said, if you have an idea, write it, write it, write it. Like, uh, oh, absolutely, we'll go crazy. Absolutely. <laughs> We were yeah. crazy, you know. You'll see all these people like, "Oh, I got this story, this story," and everyone's working. And so, um, yeah. Hopefully, we can do that this summer. That's like, I hope. God, I would love that. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm going crazy thinking this and that story and, and all these things. I'm I'm also I got the master classes. Um, yes. So I'm watching those, Just keeping the brain, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah, absolutely. You got to keep your chops up somehow. And I've got, uh, I've taken a few Zoom meetings as well. And, um, uh, you know, I've coached a few people online, which is fun. You know, it's, it's not the same as, you know, direct contact. But, um, 
I've also done a lot of union work because, of course, the union's been involved and, you know, actors are freaking out. And so we just need yeah. to tell them exactly what it is that we're doing for them. Well, I'm keeping it together. I'm going to ask you about, uh, so you, you, you're, you're SAG, but you're also working for SAG. You're um, one of the, the New York chapter, right? Yeah, I am a, a New York local board member. I'm also the vice chairman of uh, both the Low Budget Film Committee and the SAG Indie Film Committee. And I sit on uh, three other pretty important committees, including the TV and Theatrical Contract Negotiating Committee. So we have been taking meetings and, you know, and, and, and rest assured that the stewardship and, and the staff is, is they're on top of everything. They're making sure everybody's getting their residual checks, making sure that everybody's eligible for unemployment, you know, and, and all these kinds of benefits. Uh, the Actors Fund is fully loaded. So if you need help, ask. If you can, if you can help, give. That's what we say. And uh, so, um, yeah, I've been doing union service since right uh, just after the merger. So almost seven years now. Wow. Yeah. And it's been good. And I've been a national board member uh, alternate for um, about 35 meetings now. I know so, you go back and forth coast to coast. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, quite a bit. Because yeah. the national board has to meet four times a year. Yeah, and, and, and it helps. I mean, it helps actors. I, and I know the the tech um, the, the um, artistic part of what is we do is the most important part. But you really have to have some business savvy, or else you will get taken advantage of. That's another uh, committee that I'm on. It's called the uh, PRC, the Performers Relationship Committee, where we um, make sure that actors know the contracts that they're signing, because they have this thing called the GSA, a general services agreement, that if you sign that without even reading it, or sending it to a lawyer, and have stuff stricken out, you will probably give away your firstborn son. And if you hit the lottery, they can take 10% of that forever. And, uh, you know, just stupid stuff like that. The language that they write in these contracts is not aimed to benefit you. It's to benefit them. So you have to be really, really careful about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know we're, uh, well, we were hoping, um, Kevin Smith just uh, wrote Clerks 3, and we were hoping that maybe this summer we'd get to film it right here. And we're right here in New Jersey, so he's going back to the original place. So uh, Oh, I'd love that. That's that awesome. They have the, you know, the, the new tax uh, write-offs from yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tax incentives and things. So, Hopefully we get to do that. Yeah. When we get to yeah, yeah. I mean, the the, uh, the feature that I have to do the self-tape for is being shot in Pittsburgh. And even even in their breakdowns, they're saying, we are really, really hoping we can shoot this by the end of July. Yeah. So that's, you know, I think that's hopeful. You know, as I always say, expect the worst and hope for the best. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Yeah. It- just think, uh, it was going so well too. I think right before all that, it, it, it really was. I of- mean, I had a bang up like the first you know ten weeks of this of the year. It was just like you know, I had two feature films, a short, and I was uh, producing a web series, and that was like really on track, ready to go. And then the brakes hit, and so I did lose a feature and I lost a short film, but that's about it. So, I mean, it's yeah. I thought and even with our film festivals, we were getting so many submissions. It was like the best ever with submissions. And, and the film, yeah. like, it, there's a lot of times where you get like a lot that yeah. are so good. And you're like, you can easily say, okay, no, no way. Yeah. Now it, the competition this year was ridiculous. I love it. It's, I love it. Yeah. That was yeah. great. And, I, and then I love, if it doesn't make it, it's like, oh, it's, it's good. It just, we can't, fit, right. it doesn't fit under what, Right. Well, as a program director, I mean, you have to have these other considerations too, right? Oh. So yeah. I, I, in the last couple of years, I, we have a lot of more people working on it and doing it. And uh, even next year. So we're, uh, since we are uh, doing it in September, we're gonna, and we're going to open up for the next year soon, hopefully to get submissions in for the following year. Cause then we're going to turn around right away, September of course, and then May, of course, or April, yeah. May already. So before you know it, well, we'll be going again yeah hey you know it's it's people will be raring to go 
people are dying for content and, yeah. and you know and just you know being in the space with human beings it's like you know <laughs> we got all these we, uh, all these festivals we submitted to but now they're they're doing the online thing a lot of them so that's good yeah I have a lot yeah. of people graduating and they're going to miss all <laughs> Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's difficult. But I mean, we did, um, we had two films in uh, the Garden State Film Festival. Yeah. And that went virtual. I was watching it. And <laughs> yeah, we, we had Girl Boxer in there and we had uh, The House on Cox Curve, yeah. which you've had at, at your festival. Yeah. And um, it was good, except for the fact that if you weren't plugged directly into an Ethernet cord, you were going to get an awful lot of buffering and, and what have you. Yeah. So, I mean, they had a lot of Wi-Fi issues. But, of course, because everybody's on Wi-Fi right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, everybody was on So, I'm sure that the waves were, like, completely jammed. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they, they did, you know, they tried to make lemonade out of lemons. And, and yeah. they were given a big lemon, too. And it was just, you know, a, a real shame. Because festivals are not just about the films. They're about the networking. They're about the connection. Oh, They're yeah. about, you know, just right. meeting people who do what you do and, and do what you love and, and love what you do. And then my students enjoy going to that as well. Yes. Right here. They, yes. Right here. So it, it was a great opportunity for them. And they meet a lot yeah. of people. And it's a, a, couple, a few of them are going to film school. So it's like they have already met all these people at these festivals. And uh, yeah. they got a lot of contacts. So um, yeah. it's a shame. But, you know, it is what I it know. is. It is what it is, sadly. Yeah. When uh, when this is all, uh, when we get back into it, so you, uh, you got a bunch of stuff lined up as soon as we start. Up. I mean, I, ho I hope so. I mean, I, I think the web series, which is going to be, um, it's called uh, The Show. Mm -hmm. And it's based on a team in the softball league, of which I am a commissioner. And uh, it revolves around a team called The Foul Balls, right? And they have to, they have to stay out of last place, or else they get relegated to the Staten Island League the next season. <laughs> and it comes down to the final season, so it's going to be seven episodes, about five or six minutes each. And uh, we're we're rolling along. We have it completely cast and ready to go. And, and we're going to do a Kickstarter fund. We were going to do it the week that you know the baseball season opened, but that's not going to open for a while. So yeah. we'll see how that goes. Um, it's in baseball, I do right? have, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's baseball season. I waited a long time. For this. So did I, I mean, Jesus Christ. And, and, you know, and softball was supposed to start in two weeks, wow. and, you know, yeah. <laughs> so that's basically but, uh, one other, one other cool thing that has happened. Um, I don't know if you knew about this thing that I did back in 1988. It was a thing called, uh, creating Rem Lazar. And it was a children's after school special and it was a musical and I play a singing superhero. And I take these two 10 year old kids on a journey to find the highest point of the imagination, which is love. And they conjure me up in their own, in their own mind separately. And then they decide to build him and then they bring him to life. Well, anyway, this thing was only out on VHS, right, for, for years and years and years. And I don't know how many got sold, and maybe three or 4,000, whatever. But all of a sudden, it started to hit on the Internet. Oh, wow. Like about six or seven years ago. And before you know it, I'm like a cult hero to these people now. There's like all these channels about it. I mean, somebody, oh, a schlocky 1980s film, blah, 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 what have you. But it's a really sweet message. I've got my own action figure. Really? They've made a doll of me. Wow. I mean, uh, we did a VCR party live on Facebook uh, two weeks ago, and it was a smashing success. <laughs> and tonight they're going to have the director on, director uh, Scott Zacharin, who did this, yeah. uh, who wrote it and directed it, you know, back in 1988. It's, it's just like crazy. So if you want to, like, check it out, Creating Rem Lazar. Creating. Just pop it into YouTube and then <laughs> it'll pop right up. We had, Nick, the songs are great. Talking about this earlier about how like um, everything from the like eighties and early nineties is is coming back. I know. Well, it's a generational thing, right? And what's funny is that I did a play with a woman um, about I don't know five or six years ago, and all of a sudden one day I posted a picture of Rem Lazar in, in uh, on Facebook, and she writes me. She's like going. What's what about this Rem Lazar? I'm like going, oh Bianca, I said I, I was Rem Lazar. She goes, 
no. And I go, she goes, I love that film when I was a kid. No wonder I felt so comfortable with you when we were <laughs> seen together. <laughs> it's really kind of cool. That's funny. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, you've also done a lot of television. Um, my Yes. A uh, cousin of mine was just uh, doing some TV. I worked uh, behind the scenes on TV, did some extra work on TV. But you've done a lot. You've done a lot of different shows. Uh, yeah, a lot of shows. Well, most of them in New York? Um, or- yes, as a matter of fact. And uh, the only time I was, I mean, I spent two and a half years in Los Angeles. And, you know, at that point, it was right after Brothers McMullen had hit. And my managers and my, my agents wanted me to go out to Los Angeles. You know, but, you know, I thought that the indie filmmaking thing was going to be here. And they tried to push me into television more and more. We're talking about the mid 90s. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, television isn't what it is now right now, because television is film right now. And film is television. Yeah. Right. I mean, you look at these series that are just so great. I mean, Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul and you know, just all of them are just amazing. Yeah, they're all made but, like a film in their hour long. Yeah. Walking Dead, yeah. Donovan, those are like, they're epic. Believe me, I mean. Digital flipped the script entirely. It really did. And that's where a lot of the really, really good writers have gone. But getting back in the mid-90s, I was out in Los Angeles for two and a half years, and I booked five feature films while I was out there. They were all shot back in New York. <laughs> wow. So it was kind of like, yeah, the writing's on the wall. So I came back to New York. But, um, yeah, I've done all the Law & Orders. I did every single Law & Order. Um, uh, and most recently, a, a nice Blue Bloods turn, which was great. And I auditioned for that show 13 times before I nailed this part. And it was worth, it was actually worth the wait because it was so good. And you recently been on a few TV shows recently, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, the blue bloods thing. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, that was a, that was a top of show guest star, which was great. Yeah. When you have that front credit, that's nice. Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah. Single card front credit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Take it from me. <laughs> I used to uh, like working behind the scenes on the TV shows and things like that. That always, I mean, you know, it's a little different now that I'm teaching, but um, it was a lot yeah. of fun that in, the, in New York City, Absolutely. City every day. Oh God, yeah, it was so much work, it's so great. You, you know, that? and I worked with uh, Belzer, and I worked with Ice T, and Tom Selleck, and Bob Quilhesse, and all these guys, and you know, they're just you know a bunch of really really cool cats, and and. You know, the scene and then the crews are always awesome because you usually work with the same guys. Same right? guys, yeah. You go from one project to that. If you do an independent film, you might see the same. And they people. remember you more than like you'll remember where you worked with them, right? Yeah, because it could be like a completely different set. Yeah. Right? A completely different show. I mean, I go in on Blacklist and, you know, I have the sound guy that I did Blue Bloods with, or I'd go in on Blue Bloods and I'd have the sound guy that I did all the Law and Orders with. and it's pretty cool. It's, it's a it's a really tight community. Yeah, I've I've seen people that I haven't seen in like maybe when I was young doing it um, that I worked with um, behind the scenes, and then twenty years later I went back into it. I saw the same guys working on the set. I'm like, wait a second. Yeah, I worked with you yeah. twenty years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I worked with you twenty years ago. You were like, you know, the assistant writer. Now you're directing, right? All right. Yep. Yep. And that's how that works, man. It's it's like. You know, that uh, and then I've actually done um, play readings with some of the guys from Law and Order, and you know it's like terrific stuff that they like even call. Hey Jack, thinking about uh, doing this thing, would you be, if you're writing it on there? Do you know? Absolutely. Always say yes. Always say yes. Yes, absolutely. And, and don't be afraid to ask questions either. We were talking That's about right. the other night, so I mean, a lot of That's right. are afraid to go up and say something. You never know what can happen. Just ask. Uh, yeah. talking about, he yeah. just went up and asked someone, um, a question about, uh, a place in Asbury. So now they have another, uh, podcast studio in Asbury park. All he did was ask. There you go. It's, um, I had one, uh, I had one client about, I don't know, maybe five or six months ago. And we were working on, um, a scene from American Buffalo and, you know, and the kid had some talent, right? And he, Really never worked, you know, never t- took any acting lessons. Somebody, you know, referred me to him. And after a while, it's like 25 minutes in, I said to him, do you have any questions? And he goes, I- I'm really not good at asking questions. <laughs> I was like, 
well, is there anything you want to know about the scene? He goes, um, yeah, but I don't know how to ask. I said, well, is there anything confusing you? Well, yeah. I said, well, then that's the question you need to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be the one asking you the question. So you have to ask me. I'm the teacher here. And there's always times when we have somebody in, 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 in the classroom, like uh, we have a guest in the classroom, and I say, any questions? And you hear crickets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you guys know. No. <laughs> You're after, killing me. <laughs> after it's over, then they go up to the person by themselves. And I guess they don't want to say it in the crowd. They go up and no. ask. Like, I know. One. I know. If you could have said it, Brittany would have been talking. <laughs> yes, exactly. Just bring up one question, and then that'll spur more questions and, and more interest, right? And more curiosity. Um, and that's what I also tell my students: it's like, remain curious, always be curious. When you think about a character, think in terms of what if I were, what might I do? Even what might I wear? How would I walk? Right? How would I greet the day? You know, how would I, you know, would I take the subway? You know, would I grab a cab? You know, just the more specific you are, the better your performance, the more organic. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. Uh, well, I just want to say thanks for coming on. This has been great. And uh, yeah, man. And um, always good talking to you. You know that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're excited to see you. So hopefully before that, maybe uh, we got the bright side in August, hopefully. 